Alright, so for those of you who know about my flows, you can skip the first minute. Um, for those of you who don't know what these are, we have triggers and we have flows. A trigger is an event which calls for you to perform a flow. A flow is going to be the sequence of actions you perform in the cockpit. And this will happen during particular phases of flight. I've created F18 flows from startup to shutdown. This will help you learn the cockpit layout faster. You'll be able to perform the actions in a logical order. And this will help reduce your checklist reliance. Checklists and flows will work together as they verify that your flows and actions are correct. And this is particularly important in multi-crew aircraft. The flow logic, this picture here is the basis of all the flows in the PDF. Um, it can be printed off as a wall poster if you want because it's pretty big. Uh, the download link is found in the description. And like I said, we overlay the various procedures onto it and this creates the workflow. These flows are learned by repetition. So you sit in the chair with your eyes closed and visualize the flows that moves around the cockpit and reach out for where the various switches are. This is called chair flying. This will use multiple methods of learning at once. It will help improve your learning and retention of the information. It's easier to download the PDF and follow along, so I recommend you do that before you start watching the rest of the video. Today we're going to have a look at the DCS F18 uh, using my cockpit workflows. So if you need to download them and follow along, uh, they can be found in the video description. So beginning with the before start, the parking brake set because it's vertical. Any skid is going to be on because we're at an airfield, landing taxi lights off, launch bars attracted, and the flaps are going to set those to full. Select like Jason is on safe. Now on the right hand side, hook is going to be up. And for the wings, because they're spread and locked, we don't have to change the position. Both generators are on normal. Now we can turn the battery master on and we don't see an APU accumulator light. So we can go through the fire test A and B now. Just right click, we'll go through Engine test fire A. Left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. So after the second bleed air right, the test completes. You can either wait seven seconds or just turn the battery off and turn it back on again. And then left click to do test B. Um, this test doesn't really matter Engine in the sim. Left. So you don't really have Engine to do it if you don't want. Uh, just Engine the only thing is. Right. You will have to reopen the bleed air valves if you do do this test um, after you start the first engine. Now it means we can start up the APU. Now the APU is ready to provide load. You get a green ready light next to the switch. That'll come on within about 30 seconds. So with that done, here's the right engine start flow, which you can have a review for a few seconds before we move into it. So the trigger for our right engine start flow is that the APU green ready light is on and that we're ready to give it an attempt. So when we get ourselves set up, we're going to click on the right engine crank switch to the right. And then once we reach 15% RPM, I'm going to bring up the right throttle. That'll be a ground idle. Then we'll monitor the engine instruments. Now as the engine starts, the RPM is going to start increasing. The EGT will start increasing as well. We're going to start getting some more fuel flow and more oil pressure. Now once the start begins to stabilize, our RPM is going to hold between about 60 and 70 percent. The EGT is going to start falling and the fuel flow and all pressure will be within range as well. So now the engine is providing the power to the airplane. You can start getting the various displays and whatnot going. So come up, turn off the mask caution, and we'll right click to day. We'll turn the HUD on. Select the radar altimeter for altitude. And we see the HUD's coming up. Turn on the AMPCD and the right DDI to day. Get the helmet mounted side up. Set the radar altimeter to 200 feet as we're taking off from an airfield. And because we did do the fire test, we'll right click on the bleed air and we'll rotate it all the way around to normal. That way we've cycled the bleed air valves. We won't need interior lighting. We'll get the flu on a standby, radar to standby, and we'll start aligning our INS. And an extra step here, 
If you wanted to speed up this alignment process to be five times as fast, just hit the stored heading button and that'll do that for you. So now we can have a look at the left engine start flow. So a trigger for the left engine start is INS alignment beginning. So with that done, you can left click, get the left engine crank going. And as we hit 15% RPM, you can bring the left throttle up to ground idle. And the engine's going to go through the same process as before. And the last start, as we move through from left to right, basically started turning stuff on. And on this pass from left to right, we're going to be setting up the various aspects of what we have um, gotten started. Alright, so EGT is dropping, RPM is stable, so that looks pretty good. So we come up to the left EDI, and we'll set it up on the FCS page. This will be the support menu, and then FCS. And then for COM1, the frequency of this airfield is 119.3, so we set that. IFF, you can turn that on. Tack in, if you're going to use that as a frequency, you'll put that in here. And data link, turn that on. COM2, you set that if you want. And then for the right DDI, we just stop the flash and we're pressing the stop button. So we have our initial screen set up and the engines are started. So now we'll have a look at the after start flow. So the trigger for the after start flow is going to be when both engine starts are completed, which they are. So we'll go back to the lower left side of the cockpit. And the oxy flow should be fully to the right. Obogs, we turn that on, that's why we won't suffer hypoxia when we go fly. And for the FCS reset, you can see here on the FCS page we have several crosses. And what we do is we go back down to the FCS reset button. And we'll press that and we verify that those crosses disappear from the FCS page, which they do. Then we can click on the takeoff trim reset button. And we'll see the stab trim go to 12 degrees nose up, as well as the trim advisory appearing. APU will be off. Flaps, bring those up to half. Bingo fuel. Depending on the mission, you can set bingo to whatever you like. I'll just choose 3000 as an arbitrary number. Now for a bit test on the FCS. We'll click the push button number 5 to go for the bit test on that. And we see P bit go. So we need to run this test. And underneath the canopy rail, this FCS bit switch is controlled using the Y key. So you hold down the Y key for two seconds and at the same time press the FCS push button there and it'll go through the test. Just a couple of notes on this. If the nose of steering is engaged then the bit test shouldn't run. And the purpose of testing on the ground is to test the redundancy of the flight by wire system and this wouldn't be safe to do in flight. For an extra thing if you're in the cold weather with the FCS you can actually use an exerciser and you do this by holding down that FCS bit switch using the Y key and the FCS button at the same time. This will cycle the flight controls to warm up the hydraulic fluid used to move them. So we go back to the bit page and we'll continue. So we'll uncage the standby attitude indicator. Altimeter is checked and set. All the caution lights are out. So now we can close the canopy. Use left click. Now over on the left DDI we have the canopy message. And then once that goes away, we know the canopy is closed and locked. And then we can get into the before taxi flow. Alright, so for the before taxi flow, the trigger is going to be that the INS alignment is complete. We can check that on the AMPCD here. We see the OK telling us that it's done. It means we can move on. If you're going to use tack end, you can use that there. We're going to go with the waypoint, so we'll select that and then the first waypoint. So the next test we'll do is for the helmet mounted display. So you use that push button there. And then again, to display the test symbols for the helmet mounted display. And then once it cycles through all of those, and you're happy with them, you can hit the stop button. And the next step is going to be aligning it. So we go to the menu for that. 
click on HMD and we'll see the HUD will change the symbology once we hit the align button. So now we can use the head tracker to line up the two crosses and hold down the cage uncage button until we see align OK. And then you can make small adjustments with the crosses using the TDC controls. Then cage uncage will swap between them. So we use that, we go to the roll side. And you can use that to go left and right if you want. Just make sure it's lined up vertically. So now that our crosses are all aligned, we can then uncheck the align box. And that'll complete the alignment. So then we can get the wheel chocks removed. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. And then coming down to the INS, because the alignment's complete, we can set it to nav mode. So we set it there. And then we come up to the left DDI and check here. There may be an advisory that you see that says P slash INS. This means that GPS is going to be assisting the INS view position and you can then use the IFA setting. So now we come over to the left, get the position lights, turn those on. And we're not going to use the formation lights today, so we'll just use position lights. And we'll set the landing taxi light to on, release the parking brake, and then we'll do the taxi check and then continue taxiing. Alright, so to do the taxi check, I'm just going to check our brakes and I know we're steering. So we'll add some power first, get the aircraft rolling. Then we'll apply the brakes and come to a stop. And then we get the power going again and start rolling. Use the rudders, check the nose of steering in low gain. And then hold down the nose of steering button and check it in high gain, make sure we're getting the right response. Use the paddle switch, turn the nose of steering off, and then turn the nose of steering back on. And then we can continue taxiing to the runway. And from here, we're going to move forward until we get to the before takeoff sequence, just short of the runway. Taxing the F-18, you've got the nose wheel steering. We can see that on the HUD. And this is in low gain right now, so this is good for small adjustments. But when we come up to a corner like this, we'll hold down the nose wheel steering button. This will engage the high gain mode. This will allow us to make tighter turns. So we want to use this in this instance. And then we're going to come to a stop along the line, get back to low gain by releasing the nose wheel steering button. And we'll come to a stop and look at the before takeoff flow. Alright, so the first step on the before takeoff flow is to bring up the HUD on the left EDI. So it's in the tactical menu and the HUD button is a backup in case our HUD fails. And on the right DDI, you bring up the checklist and the support menu. Then we verify our aircraft weight and our stabilator trim setting so we know what we have to adjust it to if we need it. All the caution lights are out. We can arm the ejection seat. I'm going to turn the nose steering off and we'll do the control wipeout. So just move the controls with their full range of motion, verifying that everything's moving as it should. I'll turn the nozzle steering back on. Then we have a look at our before takeoff checklist, and we just verify we did all that. The only thing I didn't do was the warning lights, so if you really want to do that, you can use the warning test switch there. Let's just show everything that's working. Not really necessary in the sim though. So we're ready, we can start taxiing and ask ATC for permission to take off. In field one, one, request takeoff. Now it's kind of a weird bug where they won't clear you for takeoff and then they will, so I'm just going to turn that frequency off and change it in a bit. Now for takeoff technique, my weight um, it's about 43,000 and I'm just going to round that off to 44,000. And uh, with this configuration that I'm in, and with my stores and whatnot, my CG is about 20.6%. And this will give us a lift off speed on the nose wheel between 162 and 173 knots. And that's going to come into play during the takeoff roll. So, for takeoff technique, uh, once we line up, we're going to stand the throttles up, get to military thrust, and then we can go to the afterburner. And the aircraft's going to accelerate. And just before we get to that nose wheel lift off speed, so about 150 knots or so, we're going to pull the sticker after neutral. This is going to help raise the nose. 
and the initial pitch attitude is going to be between 6 to 8 degrees and we use the waterline symbol initially for that then we get the gear and the flaps up and then we'll like accelerate to 350 knots with about 15 degrees nose up alright so we'll start increasing the thrust now and get rolling go up to military thrust and if you want to get a burner then you can do so very small rudder inputs to keep the airplane straight on the runway and start approaching 150 knots pull the seek afterward neutral so start raising the nose get the waterline up to between 6 to 8 degrees get the gear and the flaps up you can hold the pitch attitude initially when you get to 300 knots you can pull it out of burner if you want and then you can accelerate to 350 knots and bring it up to about 15 degrees nose up and if you're flying with a wingman, you may not want to be full power at this point, so you can pull the power back just a little bit and lower the nose as needed to maintain 350. So here's the climb flow. So once you're established in the climb, you can set yourself up using the autopilot and attitude hold if you wanted to, or you can couple it to a waypoint. I'm going to do an attitude hold here. That's why I can just quickly look down and go through the flow to show you. So we're not in any clouds, so we don't need any ice. Fluid can go on, radar to operate, we can get the EW stuff going. EW page. While it's doing that, we can turn the altitude back to barometer and get the landing taxi load off. Right, so you can program your uh, countermeasures if you wanted to do that. This is just some arbitrary numbers I'll just go through chaff flare, the repeating number and then the interval of each drop Then you can save that and go back to return and then on the right DDI you can set up on the uh, radar attack page and you're pretty much ready to go. Looks like I bumped something so you can go back to EW page or SA or HSI or whatever you want. So to complete the video on uh, copy of flows and the start up through the takeoff of the F-18. So until next time, remember to fly safe and check 6.